Hi everybody, welcome back. Today is May 21st, 2020. Doing another Cracking the Zodiac video. And by the way, if there's any D.B. Cooper fans that are subscribing to the channel, I haven't done anything on D.B. Cooper in a while. That's because I'm writing a book about D.B. Cooper. And that'll be out in about a week or so. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And I'll also do some more videos uh, relating to the book as well. Uh, as far as the Zodiac goes, I had some um, housekeeping issues here that I thought were interesting. And one is where I think that uh, my person of interest, which is Donald Lee Cheney, everybody that watches this channel knows that, or if you've read my book, you know that. And this is about where I think he was inspired to do ciphering and the Zodiac ciphers. And if you look at the screen, uh, there's a picture of a cipher in the Bakersfield, California newspaper. And these were put there by a man named Earl M. Price. And Earl Price was a West Point graduate in the 1930s. He was there when uh, General MacArthur was a superintendent, really smart guy. And he had a photostatic copy shop, uh, blueprint service, did lithographs, things like that. And uh, he was primarily in business from, I think, the late 40s all the way through the 1950s and part of the 60s. So that would be the perfect time for, for Donald Lee Cheney, who was living in Bakersfield, to look at his local paper and see these ciphers and try to solve them. And if you saw the ciphers that the Earl Price put in the newspaper, he would give you $10 when they first started out. And I think later on uh, he did it for, you know, trade in his shop or something like that. But in the 1950s, uh, $10 was about $96, you know, $96 in uh, today's money as far as buying power goes. So not a shabby prize back then. So, uh, you know, he was the only person that I know was doing anything like this in the 1950s was Earl Price. And people in other cities found out about it. People even as far as ways Pittsburgh were trying to get in on this and, you know, solve the ciphers because people were having fun at it. And uh, you can see, you know, he used letters. Uh, sometimes he used numbers. We know the Zodiac uh, ciphers had uh, symbols as well as letters forward and backwards. So they're a little bit different. But anyway, uh, for Don being uh, in Bakersfield at that period, he would have definitely seen Earl Price's ciphers that came out every Tuesday, all through the late 1940s and all through the 1950s when he lived there. So you could not have missed him if you read the local paper, and a lot of people did, and I'm sure he did. So definitely would have saw ciphers there that could have been the first thing. You know, you could be the smartest person in the world, but you're not going to be able to come up with that concept on your own and know what they're called cryptograms. So definitely I think that's where he was exposed to it. And now moving on to where I think Don Cheney got the inspiration for some of the different symbols used in the Zodiac ciphers. And it comes from a class that he took at Bakersfield College in the fall of 1954. And it's, it's uh, talked about in an article that was printed in the Bakersfield, California newspaper on Friday, October 1st, 1954. And it's titled, Teaching Difficulties Demonstrated at Fair. And this was uh, something put on by... Uh, Don's professor in that class at the Kern County Fair, and it talked about, you know, using uh, different samples and demonstrations of uh, ways to, to teach people better, and what they used for examples were they were using the weather, and they used different books that, that talked about the weather, such as Ann Lindbergh's Listen to the Wind, that was obviously Charles Lindbergh's wife, and a book she wrote about uh, the weather trouble they had on one of their uh, transatlantic flights and, and problems they had with that. But other materials that were used in this demonstration were a uh, weather map from the Kern County Weather Bureau and also a ship's report in code, it says in the article. And what that is, is uh, what they call synoptic code. And those use different symbols to for ships at sea to... to, to uh, mark down the weather to map what the weather conditions are. And they use uh, these little symbols and they have balls that are uh, called octaves. Like so uh, clear sky is a, a circle that's clear. And then with the line down the middle, you can see on the screen is a one octa and then partially shaded is two octaves. Well, this has been around since I think the 40s. So it definitely goes back quite a ways. I know there was one TV show that speculated the Zodiac could have taken, uh, you know, the inspiration for some of the, the, the ball symbols from what they call uh, booze balls because they were developed at a company called Booze Allen Hamilton um, by a guy whose first name was Harvey. So they were, they're also called Harvey balls because the guy's first name was Harvey. I can't recall his last name. But anyway, these uh, symbols being used for weather were being used for a long time. The Harvey balls were only developed uh, in 1969, which is the same year that the Zodiac first sent the ciphers out in July of 1969. So even back then, it was very proprietary. So most people just don't think that's where they came from because it was just too early. 
but this is definitely where those symbols could have come from. And I think, you know, a friend of mine that knows the case pretty well told me that they probably heard that before. So I'm not trying to be the first one with that, but I am trying to demonstrate that Don would have known about these pretty early on from being in this class. And his name is listed here in the article with about 10 other of his classmates. So definitely could have been where those, those symbols came from. And uh, another symbol that you see uh, the Zodiac used a couple of times, one was on the, the Halloween card cover, which was the what they call the, uh, the VF or the VF logo, which people think came from Red Rider, the comic book. I think that was Tahu 27's fine. She's also the one that came up with the, uh, the Tim Holt comic book connection. And I was going to talk about that as well. But anyway, the, uh, the symbols used for the wind or the... Uh, it looks very similar to that logo. So he could have also gotten it partially from the weather symbols. So I don't know. It could have been part of Red Rider, part of uh, the weather symbols. So it's just something that putting out there. But uh, going back to Tim Holt and the comic book connection, I know Tahu 27 actually told me that she's not even positive that the Halloween card is authentic Zodiac. I think it is. She's not sure, even though it's her discovery that, uh, you know, that came from uh, the Tim Holt comic called... Uh, that had Lady Doom and the Wheel of Death. That's where the Zodiac got by knife, by fire, by gun. And uh, obviously that's a Tim Holt comic. So uh, they, you know, that theory is that uh, Zodiac was inspired by Tim Holt, who was a, a real actor that the comic book was based on. Well, there's another article here about Tim Holt coming to Bakersfield for a Boy Scout uh, ceremonial rites in 1949. And Don was in the Boy Scouts in Bakersfield in 1949. I know that for a fact. He bequeathed his Boy Scout axe to his son, made a brand new leather sheath for it. If you have my book, you know that. Um, so he was definitely in the Boy Scouts. I don't know if he made Eagle Scout, but he was definitely in the Cub Scouts. His mother was a Din mother, and Don was a Boy Scout. So Don most likely was at this event that Tim Holt himself showed up to and met him. So, uh, you know, that would have been a big deal. So definitely, if you're living in Bakersfield it, 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 during the the late 40s and through the 1950s you would have exposed to a lot of this stuff that they think the zodiac was exposed to the ciphers uh red rider comic strip was it was in the bakersfield california one of the regular strips um and you name it uh tim holt coming in town boy scouts it's all there uh you know maybe other towns have some of these things too but they were all definitely in bakersfield so uh lots of inspiration could have come from from uh all this stuff just being in that that town at that time so uh that's it for now i've got a new video coming out that shows a very early connection to uh, don cheney and arthur lee allen that goes back to the 1930s it's shocking enough to, to, to hear that and i don't know if that make doesn't make him the zodiac or not but it's extremely interesting that they have a tie going back that far and that'll be the next video thanks for watching